In this section, you will read one passage and answer comprehension questions about the passage. You have 18 minutes to read all of the passages and answer the questions. In the exam, when you want to go to the next question, click the next button. You may skip questions and go back to them later as long as there is time remaining. If you want to return to previous questions, click on the back button. You can click on review at any time and the review screen will show you which questions you have answered and which you have not. However, this is a mock test and you cannot use any buttons. You should read and answer the questions within 18 minutes for each passage.
In this section of the test, you will hear dialogues and academic talks, and you will be tested on your ability to understand them. You will hear each dialogue and academic talk only once, and then answer questions after each is finished. The questions ask about the main idea, supporting details, and the way the speakers use language. Answer each question based on what is stated or implied by the speakers. While you listen, you may take notes. You can then use your notes to answer the questions. Listen to the introduction part of the conversation and choose the best answer for each question. Listen to a conversation between a student and a residence manager. Excuse me. I'm staying in room 27. I'd like to make a service request for room maintenance. Oh, what seems to be the problem? Um, the light bulb in my room keeps flickering. It's impossible for me to study in my room because of it. And I've got a paper that's due tomorrow. I've had this light bulb problem since this afternoon. I called this office several times, but no one answered the phone. Do you know why nobody was picking up? Well, this is not the area of the campus that I normally service. I'm in charge of the Westfield dormitory, and I'm only here for the night, just in case an emergency occurs. There's another residence manager who services this part of the campus during the day. Maybe when you called, he was unavailable. I see. So, could you please fix my light? Uh. Why don't you just change the bulb? That's probably all that needs to be done. Do you know how to change a bulb? Of course, I know how to change a bulb. It doesn't take a genius to replace a light bulb. In fact, I did change it. But I had the same problem, the light kept flickering. So I'm pretty sure it's not the bulb, but the circuit itself. That's something I can't fix because I'm not an electrician. So could you send someone over to fix it? Well, the maintenance person has gone home for the night, and I can't call him up unless it is an emergency and I'm sorry to say that this doesn't qualify as an emergency. A damaged circuit is not an emergency? You seem to be the only one who has a light problem, so it's not dormitory-wide, which, if it were, would have qualified it as an emergency. And anything involving the student's safety is considered an emergency. You can't come and fix it yourself? You know, I'm fully aware that you're having problems studying because of your light, and I do want to help but I'm required by the university to stay at the office in case an urgent situation actually occurs. Plus, I have no idea how long it would take to deal with the problem or if I would even be able to figure out what the problem is. But I need to work on my paper. Couldn't you write your paper in the dormitory student lounge? The student lounge closes early. Oh, yeah, that's right. Could you please just fill this one request? I'm worried about not being able to finish my paper on time. And my room is right up the stairs and down the hall. It would probably take you no more than 30, 45 minutes at the most, to fix the circuit. Well, I can try calling the maintenance person, but I can't promise that he'll come over. He's not required to do overtime, so he has the prerogative to say no if he doesn't want to work. Is there really nothing else you can do? Well. I guess I could make an exception and give you access to the student lounge in your dormitory. You could work on your paper there. That's a great idea, but it's locked. I'll give you the key and you can return it to me when you finish your paper. I really appreciate this. No problem. I'm glad I could help. Can the maintenance guy fix my light tomorrow? Absolutely. I'll make sure he does. Great. Thanks so much for offering the room. No problem. Here's the key. Don't forget to bring it back. Now get ready to answer the questions. You may use your notes to help you answer.
Listen to a conversation between a student and his professor. Good morning, Professor Dotson. Good morning, Raphael. I'm glad you're here because I meant to get in touch with you. I didn't get your essay on social conflict theory yesterday, and I'm wondering if you forgot about the deadline. Oh, no, ma'am. I didn't forget. I plan to send my essay by email before 6 p.m. yesterday, like you told the class to do. But there was a problem with my computer. It froze while I was writing the essay, and I couldn't recover all of my work. So I had to rewrite a large section of my essay. I emailed it right before I left for your office. Could you please check your email? I'm sure it must have already arrived. Actually, I did check my email about a minute before you came. But I didn't see anything from you. I guess I'll go and check again. Just to make sure, I'll send it to you again. By the way, Professor Dotson, I know you're preparing for your retirement party, and I was, um, I'd like to offer my assistance, if I may. That's really very nice of you to offer a helping hand, Raphael, but the event really isn't going to be that big. I've only invited a few people, you know, mostly those I'm close to. I'd like to thank you, anyway, just for the offering. I'm just curious, what made you think to lend a hand? Well, ma'am. To be honest with you, you were without a doubt the professor I liked best. So, I feel kind of sad that you're retiring. Also, the due date for a report I was planning to write on Saturday was pushed back, so I don't have much to do this weekend. Thanks so much for the offer, Raphael. You're such a dear. I so, um, having been at this university for the past 37 years, you must know a lot about the university's history. And I'm sure you've seen many changes that have taken place. Sure have. Some of the changes have been welcome, some not so welcome. It's a pretty complex process that has a lot to do with the people. The changing times and the socio-economic and political milieu we're living in. Well, let me not go into all that. I'm talking from a sociological standpoint. I'll just say that it's been an absolutely marvelous 37 years. I hope I'm not being too forward, but may I ask how you feel about retiring? No, you're not being forward at all. I hope this doesn't sound like a cliché, but I have mixed feelings. On the one hand, I'm going to miss my students. It has always been about the students, getting to know them, interacting with them, and having a hand in shaping and molding them. There's the academic growth as well. I learn a lot through my job. On the other hand, I'm looking forward to indulging in a bit of gardening. I've always had a thing for plants. How very interesting, Professor. I'm a plant lover myself. Well, that's quite a coincidence. Oh, hey, I just remembered. There is something you can help me with if you have the time. You know I've written quite a number of manuscripts and essays on sociology. And I was thinking of putting them all in a book. It's one of the things I wanted to do for my retirement. And in the near future, I could even have the book published if a publishing company shows any interest in my anthology. Anyhow, I've been working on the bibliography of my book. And there are just a few references left to include. Could you complete it for me? I can give you a copy of what I've done so far. I would be most happy to do the work, Professor. Oh, good. When can you start working on it? I can start helping out this very afternoon. That's really nice of you, Raphael. If it takes up too much of your time, let me know. I don't want to impose on you. Now get ready to answer the questions. You may use your notes to help you answer.